quick question. Does anyone here actually do any GPU-based like hash cracking? Nice. Cool. You guys very much might know more, a lot more than me on this. So uh, if you have like good hints, uh, I'm looking on, always looking for like new methods of trying to do stuff. So shout it out because I'd be interested to hear it. Um, this talk is very quickly put together. Uh, I kind of when anonymous went after Stratfor and dumped all their hashes and everything. Uh, this was actually really kind of my first time trying to dive into and break all the hashes that they had. So uh, this is kind of how I did it, my methodology, my thoughts, and um, like a PPAL output of all the results that I found so far. Uh, full disclosure, I've cracked about 71% of them so far. Uh, I actually had some a little bit of trouble like uh, a month or so ago where all my dictionary files and everything was start and my rules I was using uh, wasn't really turning out much more because I pretty much ran through everything. And um, I was talking with Pure Hate and he helped me chug through and find a huge uh, batch basically through brute forcing. I'll tell everyone about it in just a sec. Um, like I said, this presentation, I kind of just want to let everyone know how I did it. And um, I pretty much just do it because it's fun. It's not my job, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. And I like doing this. So, yeah. Um, so this happened, I believe it was either Christmas Eve uh, this year, last year. And uh, it was they broke into their systems and uh, I know that was when they released the hashes uh, I believe that the, uh, Stratford actually came out since then and said that they thought that they also previously saw that they were infiltrated but they didn't know if that was when they dumped the hashes or now was when uh, but basically a ton of information was stolen as pretty much everyone has probably seen that has watched the news anytime in the past couple in the past month uh, you had your full name email address uh, your address your credit card information your password hash ton of other good stuff was out there for anyone to get and um, it was all in a giant text file or Excel spreadsheet for easily manipulating and taking the data uh, so okay so this is kind of how I started going into it was um basically once you get that what do you do what did I do is um, I actually if you open up the Excel spreadsheet they had a nice column just of hashes and so I basically just dumped all of that into a text file um, after you do that, you kind of want to try to figure out, obviously, the hashing algorithm that they're using so you can start attacking that specifically and use your favorite hash cracking tool. Uh, what we found out was Stratfor was using all completely unsalted MD5 hashes. So if there's the, an easiest hash to break, it's probably MD5, even more so if it's unsalted. So. Can you go into how you identified it? Um, well, we, there wasn't any salt released with it because usually they'll release the salt if they can dump that from the uh, database as well. And so that was a quick quick guess, just trying through. Um, also took a sample of the hashes, started running it through my uh, hash cracking, Aqual Hashcat is what I, or CUDA Hashcat uh, is what I used, um, and was able to break it. So, uh, and then just kind of looking at this uh, hash length, uh, I was able to figure out it was MD5 pretty quickly. It wasn't SHA, any form of that. Yeah, uh, GPU base is pretty much the fastest method of cracking hashes, any hash now. I, I'm gonna completely blow the statistic, but I remember there was some hash where um, I put it on like John the Ripper or something like that uh, to try to break it via CPU. And it said if to go through the whole like key space is gonna take me something like 70 days for whatever I was doing. And then I put the same thing in my GPU and it said it was gonna, my card and it was like 10 hours. So it's, you're talking a significant improvement in uh, performance and how fast you can go through the whole key space if you're using your GPU versus your CPU. Um, Aqua Hashcat is what I use. Uh, specifically, I use CUDA Hashcat because I have an NVIDIA-based card. But um, that's what I use. 07 is the latest version out right now, I believe. Although there is a beta of 08. So how did I create um, a word list? Um, what I did is Skull Security is a great website that uh, actually keeps a track of a lot of password dumps that are out there. Um, and what I did is people already posted all the found passwords from Rocky, PHP, BB, MySpace, some random porn websites, and uh, they also had a giant list of like Facebook first names and last names. Uh, that should be last names. And um, basically, I just catted everything into a giant text file and uniqued it and started from there. That was my first word list that I built. How uh, big was it? That one, oh God. 
that was maybe like 250 megs. It wasn't massive. I, I, I'm, I don't know, but what eventually happened is I also went on uh, BitTorrent. You can find that there's just giant like word lists out there. I don't know if, um, I can't remember the exact name of what it was, but there's like three gig word lists that you can just download. And so basically, as I kept finding all these word lists out there, I kept appending them to the end of my, uh, my word list that I had sorting and uniquing it so I can get rid of all the duplicates and uh, cause I just wanted all the unique words there and then basically as I cracked passwords as I started going through the list I would take the cracked passwords add them back into my dictionary file and then use that to see if I can start generating any more passwords um, so when you're using a dictionary based uh, attack you Oracle Hashcat also has rules and basically these are methods of mutating the words in your dictionary file. So you can make it easy. You can say you have one word as password in your dictionary file. It can say, hey, add a number one, or add a number to the end of that word. So you, it'll test all password, password one, password two, so forth. Add a number at the beginning. Um, you can leadify your text and like replace A with at. Uh, it's basically, you have this just giant rule set that, uh, that, well, they come with a bunch of different rules, but you can also go through and custom create your own rule sets to do what any sort of modifications you want to the words. Um, and what I did when I first started out is I basically just took all the rule sets that they gave me, just catted that into one giant file, and then uh, used that to try to have just as big of a rule set as I can for when I was going through this. Um, one I should notice, yeah, they, and it's either 07 or an 08 coming up, is they're coming out with like using multiple rule sets to, in Aqua Hashcat specifically, where you can. I'm not entirely sure how it works. So it's kind of beyond the scope of this talk, but it's supposed to be a really awesome feature. And so if someone knows, just maybe come up and tell me, because that would be interesting. Um, brute forcing is the other pretty much tried and true method of going through this whole thing. Um, they do it through password masks. And as you can see, you can kind of define, they, they, they define it either L for lowercase, U for uppercase, D for numbers, uh, S for special characters. And they also have special, like, uh, foreign language uh, characters that you can also include in a lot better on their own mask. So if I wanted to create a mask specifically that could find the password Jason one star, you would do it with the uppercase, lowercase, 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 D for um, digits, and S for special characters. So that's kind of just two different examples on how you can use masks to brute force specific uh, key space. And then that really helps because you're eliminating instead of having 52 characters because you can only pick between a letter, you can actually reduce it down to, okay, check only the lowercase characters. Um, maybe if somehow there's a password policy out there where the administrators really don't think too much about it and say um, how, either how how many uppercase or stuff that they're supposed to be, um, maybe sometimes the position or, or anything like that. It's kind of unlikely because most people pretty much got smarter, but just in case, you can specifically target that in that specific location. I did not, um, I, they, I, I, I can tell you exactly what they do in just a second. Okay. Oh. They have no policy. They just tell you to find the number of the like four or five characters long. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, yeah, they, they had no policy. So, but I mean, there's something that they did by default, which we'll get through in just a sec. So basically I did this and I did a combination of uh, brute force and dictionary files. And I'll tell you in just a second on my next slide or my two slides down exactly what we found out. But so the total password stats that I found specifically were 594,000, blah, 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 you can see it. Um, top 10 passwords, number one was apparently David, number two was 22, don't know why. I guess people really like those numbers. But it was interesting, top 10 base words for your company, Stratford, and number one was of course Stratford. Uh, Strat and then passwords. So what was interesting here was uh, for the password length is number eight obviously had the most amount of passwords out there. And uh, what was found out, and was what Pure Hate actually had helped me with, was uh, by default when you you signed up to Stratfor and uh, they sent you a password, and their password was always eight characters long, it always included uppercase, lowercase, and digits, and that was it. So what this basically shows is um, a shitload of people didn't change their first password that they were given. And um, that made it really easy to brute force this. 
Um, I'm kind of a little annoyed because I, I started brute forcing this uh, key space, and according to, I don't have a that great of a computer. I have like a GTX 285 um, as my graphics card, which is good like two years ago. And um, I started going through it with that specific uh, key set, and it said it was going to take about four and a half days on my card to compute or to go through the whole range. And on day three, my computer froze. So, <laughs> so at the moment, I'm a little annoyed, and I don't want to restart it to just sit there for three days and not find anything. And so I got to just w – once I finally just do it, maybe this weekend, I'll update the stats, and there will be a whole lot more out there. But um, So, yeah, that's what they did. And so they, they created this uh, default password and sent this out to everyone. But what got me really looking at this was thinking it was really odd is – we have right here 51 people that have one character. So this means that these people actually received their password, went back into the system, and changed it to the letter A, <laughs> or like period. Well, have you, have you looked at the usernames for those 51? What if they were like test accounts created by you know, special developers? I'm going to test this thing, and I'm going to make the password of A. It's a good so point. It could have been accounts that were created through the normal process. It's possible. Um, I mean, it's still stupid. Oh, oh yeah. No, I, I actually didn't do that because when am I, I, I was basically just dumping all the hashes. Didn't associate it with a specific user account. I mean, I can go back now. Yeah, I'd be curious if you now that I have it. I don't. Do you know? My experience is user zero problems. <laughs> did you go through this as well? I didn't actually. I think I have a coworker who did. Um, okay. But I haven't been through it yet. Okay. Because so I was, I can't remember exactly if there were a whole lot of actual test accounts and what was released. Um, there might have been, there might not have been. I didn't really look for that. I was focused more on that. But irregardless, I mean, you're talking, I mean, based off of these numbers here, there's a significant amount of passwords that were changed to worse than their default password policy, which either through users or developer test accounts, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and then pretty much it's just kind of the rest of the stuff. A lot of people based, I mean, people would still base their passwords off of months or days. Um, the last two digits, 22, or well, 23, excuse me, is the most popular. But then after that, for, if there were last three digits, four digits, five digits, you have 123 was the most popular. 123, 1234, 12345. So pretty much everyone would have pretty predictable password selection. Um, that's pretty much the end of it, real quick. But um, yeah, go for it. Well, with Stratfors, um, well, with Anonymous's work, they... Hey, Jeff.